one phrase from New York City. From New Creation Church, Joseph and Wendy Prince. And now, Matt and Lori Crouch. grace all night long and one of our favorite things in the whole world to do is talk about Jesus Come on. talk about his finished work <laughs> talk about the gospel of grace right. and uh, Joseph Prince is here come on now I like it fun 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 okay Here, I Absolutely. just feel it. How they say? <laughs> what do they say? That behind every great man is a woman well, rolling her eyes. Uh, <laughs> so, okay. Um, Out loud. Let's talk about first of all, just kind of the. We love waking up to hope and grace. We love the uh, opportunity that the gospel of grace has changed us, has helped us. For Lori and me, oftentimes we say it, it just makes you forget about yourself yeah. and go in the power of what uh, God wants us to do, is to think about Him, not yeah. ourselves. And so ultimately, uh, that is a message that mm -hmm. it's always fun. My mom has now been in heaven for a number of years. Um, I, whenever I sit here, I think of her because See that purple color kind of in the skylight <laughs> back there? That was kind of like the color of her hair, hair. You know, I mean, yeah. so I always think about her when I'm here. But, but the, the other reason is because you did a message a number of years ago. I'm going to call it 20 years ago <laughs> on uh, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Yeah. And somehow we found that mm -hmm. videotape. I think my mom played it on TBN enough to wear some of the oxide off the tape. <laughs> And, and that's how we got introduced to a young, vibrant, still young, still vibrant, Joseph Prince. And, and ultimately, my mom, uh, like Wendy, was kind of the neck that turned the head. Yeah, okay. And, and ultimately, let's do it one more time. Okay. Okay. You're supposed to do that. Oh, yeah, you go ahead. Yeah, okay. So. <laughs> Yeah. I cannot remember. Yeah. Okay. What's happening right now? <laughs> and, and, so, and so ultimately, what I, I, I can't help but think about my mom and mm -hmm. her love for your teaching and your hair and everything. She just loved your hair. And, okay. Okay. Yeah, without the color. Yeah, exactly. So basically, uh, it, it felt like I always say the name of the book that you wrote a long time ago, Destined 15 years, Rain. Destined to Rain. It felt like somebody got that book to me and it felt like it was, I was reading what I felt inside, that you had written a narrative mm -hmm. of the way that, that I was hoping the kingdom of God worked, yeah. you know, I mean, at some point. So you put words on paper to my feelings and that's why we've been brothers ever since. So ultimately, thank you for what you do and teach. All right. So the question I love to ask all the time is why did a few years ago the mm -hmm. gospel of grace and really this, why did it feel new? What had happened mm -hmm. to the way we were getting taught to and preached to mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that made the gospel of grace feel new? What happened? You know, I really believe that it's a fulfillment of Bible prophecy. Okay. In Jeremiah 23, where God says uh, this will happen during the times when the Jewish people will come back to their homeland, okay. Israel, from the north. Now, it is not like when they came out of Egypt. This will eclipse the exodus from Egypt. He says that when this happens, when they come back from the north, this is the name of the Lord in those days, the Lord our righteousness, mm. okay. which is grace, totally grace, which means uh, you are not your own righteousness and we cannot produce our own righteousness. The Lord is our righteousness, which means in His eyes, if He is our righteousness, it is sure, it is secure, it is eternal. Yep. You cannot lose your righteousness. Your righteousness is in heaven. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. 
if the devil wants to check out your standing with God, go check him out. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Wow. He is my righteousness. So I'm always stable. I'm always secure, regardless of my fluctuating emotions. Yeah. And I think what is happening these days is that if God, if God is not behind it, it, it cannot be the work of man. Amen. The way it resonates with so many hearts. You said it so well just now. You said that when uh, I wrote the book, Destined to Reign, uh, it, it resonated with you. Mm. It put words to what you've been experiencing. Yeah. Yeah. Your, your head is playing catch up, you know, yeah. uh, because religion has a way of messing up your head, yeah. right? But, but your heart is saying, yes, this is what I believe. This is the God I believe in, yeah. you know? And I think God is doing this revival. And it says this, that in those days when he, this is his name, the Lord our righteousness, the people will fear no more, yeah. mm. nor be discouraged, neither shall they be lacking. Wow. For yeah. I will raise up shepherds to feed them. Wow. Yeah. And the shepherd will feed them with the message the Lord is your righteousness. Amen. Beautiful. That, I love that answer. Okay, I love that answer. Uh oh. But you didn't quite. <laughs> but you didn't yeah. quite answer what my real question was. What was being taught when I was young? Because the gospel of grace and the fulfillment mm -hmm. of this prophetic word felt new. Right. Was the, what 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 was wrong? Maybe that was just in our life. Well, the, no, no, but he's, he's the preacher. He has to answer <laughs> the question. So it is true all over the world. I think we have been steeped into legalism. Okay. And and I don't want to knock the the teachers or the pastors that that taught them because many of them are sincere, you know, and they're sincerely wrong, but but they, they were sincere. Yeah. They were doing their best, and the louder they shout against sin, usually they have a secret sin that they are, they are ashamed of or they are trying to overcome. So, so they, they, they try to uh, preach an ultra holiness. So, you know, I believe in holiness, but, but holiness means being uncommon. Hmm. It doesn't mean that, you know, you gotta, you gotta tie your bun so tight, you know, and, and the, when you blink your, eye, your eyes, you know, the whole thing shakes, you know? I mean, it's like no makeup on your face and that's what we've been taught for years. And, and there's a lot of struggle, a lot of self-effort in this kind of religion, uh, but but when grace comes in, when you realize God's grace is all done, there comes a rest. Mm. Yes. Beautiful. You just let go. Beautiful. And in fact, the Hebrew word for, for healing is Rapha, Jehovah Rapha. But the root word of Rapha is Rapha with a He, which means relax. Yeah. So yeah. when you relax, it promotes healing mm. in your bodies and minds. Mm. Mm. The, the, so you are very kind. Uh, in the way you explain yeah. this, it's a it's a very appropriate way. You to want do me to this. knock some preachers? Or? No, I don't. I, I, I literally, I just, I what 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 scares me sometimes is to think that someone could think the gospel of grace is some kind of new twist. Yeah, it's it's really the root of yes. what, but it was just felt new, well and that's just a a really really strange thing that we got so far off mm -hmm. uh, in regard to this because this felt like a breath of fresh air. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's, it's sad that somebody would ever think the gospel of grace, oh, mm -hmm. this new young preacher from mm -hmm. Singapore doing this message. Mm -hmm. It is the message. It is the message. Yeah. You know, I, just, I remember uh, my daddy. My daddy would have loved you. And he didn't get a chance to meet you before he passed away. but. He, back in the day, preached, preached grace in an amazing way. He was mm -hmm. always um, kind of ahead of his time. Mm -hmm. And one of my, oh, <laughs> is I wish he would have got to meet you, because he would have loved it. But I remember, oh, OK. <laughs> I remember my cousins. They were all raised in a certain denomination, as my father was. Same denomination, but they were going to the college in the Bible school from this denomination. And I remember a big busload of kids came to our church. Mm -hmm. uh, this was years and years ago. And my cousin, they all sat around my dad, and he started preaching grace to them. Mm -hmm. And it was in such a way that I remember these kids all just weeping and crying, saying, but we're taught that every time we sin, mm. it's like climbing a ladder. Yeah. 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 And if you sin, you just fall to the ground. Mm. And then you've got to start all over again, and you've got to try to climb your ladder. 
and then you fall. And I remember my dad ministering to them, just grace to them, and it just mm -hmm. changed their life. Mm -hmm. Because if 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 that's the way it is, then then mm -hmm. there is no hope for us. Yeah. You know, and um, I think the message of grace absolutely transforms your life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. into a life of love mm -hmm. and service. How many have been changed by the gospel of grace? It's your whole perspective of God and His love and His transformation just is amazing. How would you say something? Because you preach so good <laughs> and you talk, Wendy. Well, I think for me, the, the, the point about grace is that it brings rest. Yeah. You know, rest for your conscience. Yeah. You know, and when we have rest in our conscience, we can come before God without that fear, mm. without thinking that He's going to judge us yeah. when, we make, when we stumble, when we make a mistake. Yeah. And I think that it, it tears down that barrier. You know, yeah. a lot of religion has set up many, many barriers to God, but grace tears down those barriers. Yeah. And when we, come, when we come to the Lord and we, we can call Him Abba, yeah. you know, He's no longer God, but He's Abba. Yeah. And, and rest in our conscience knowing that the finished work of His Son has paid for our conscience mm. to be at, at rest. Mm. And so, you know, there, there's nothing to fear anymore when we yeah. come before Him. I can tell Him all, all my worries, my concerns. I know He's not going to judge me for it. Mm. I feel loved because He knows all my weaknesses and failings, but He still loves me. Yeah. And that gives me rest. And yeah. I think, I think yeah. that that's the most wonderful relationship. I think that's what He planned all along for us to yeah. have. Yeah. Beautiful. So beautiful. I think that a lot of people, I think, if the truth was known, they are, they are not uh, secure or comfortable in God's presence mm -hmm. as they would with a friend. Mm -hmm. They can meet a friend at Starbucks and they spend an hour or two. And before they realize it, the, the hour just passed. Mm -hmm. right? But when it comes to like, let's have an hour of prayer, you know, it's almost like they come in real fast, they throw in their requests, lest they sin in His presence, yeah. in thought, word, or deed. And then it's almost like I throw my request real fast so that He knows my request and I'm going to run out mm. where I'm at rest. Yeah. You know, and I don't think the Father appreciates that kind of present. But when you, when you come to Him knowing that uh, even if you, you commit a faux pas, you know, you sin or you, you have a wrong thought, erroneous thought or unbelief or whatever, you can be in His presence just like the sinners were in Jesus' presence and never receive any condemnation from Him. Beautiful. In fact, His presence transformed them. Right. And everyone that He healed, not a single one of them were believers hmm. at that time. He has not yet died. Yeah. So all of them were people that uh, were not deserving of healing. Mm -hmm. He never categorized them. All of you who want to be healed, you get right with your wives here. Okay, you are in this category. <laughs> and all of you who have unforgiveness in your heart, you stand over here. All right, I'll pray for you later. Get right first. All right, yeah. forgive if you need to forgive. And then uh, he never did that. All who came to him, all received. I'm sure they had, they had all kinds of problems, you know. We need to see Jesus again. Yeah. Beautiful. You know, the real Jesus of the Bible. Beautiful. Wow. Okay, uh, we are... First of all, welcome to the United States. Yeah. We are here in New York City. Come on, New York. I like it. And um, you're doing a bit of a tour yes. across, and uh, I don't know exactly when this is airing, but um, basically all the information's on the screen. So uh, come see Joseph in person if, if there's any chance you can. So you'll be in New York, uh, Washington, Washington, Dallas, Dallas Houston, Houston, and California, yes. in Southern California. So um, now, with this appearance, um, first of all, let me just say uh, that to you and the viewing audience, uh, here in a, in a bit, in a half hour or so, we're going to actually take Holy Communion to, together, all of us here in the audience and you watching. So uh, is there any rules? Can you take it with you know, Wonder Bread and water, if, it's, if that's all you have, is that okay? <laughs> no. The wonderful thing about God is that uh, the things of God are available for everyone. Yeah. You know, and if anyone comes to you and say that you got to get my, my package, my stuff, you smell religion. Okay. You smell con, a con artist. But, you know, things of God are free, just like air. Yeah. You know, and anyone can do communion at home. Yeah. They can so receive communion. Just you can get do it with a cracker and no, water, if that's that all you matter. have. Yeah, okay, got it. So, except for noodles. No. <laughs> no noodle. <laughs> okay. All right. 
So uh, Eat Your Way to Life and Health is, is Pastor Joseph's new book. And we're going to get into this subject uh, now, and I want to I talk about this, but we have a little bit of a bio that we've done for someone that uh, hasn't been waking up to hope and grace. Uh, you <laughs> but need you to. Can. <laughs> uh, but this uh, roll in concerning Pastor Joseph and Wendy. Watch this. They'll be with us all night long. Here you go. Pastor and New York Times best selling author Joseph Prince has dedicated his life to proclaiming the gospel of grace. His sermons, which focus on unveiling Jesus and his finished work, are broadcast in over 10 languages to millions of homes around the world on both secular and Christian television networks, while his books and other resources have been translated into more than 20 languages. Since he became the senior pastor of New Creation Church in 1990, the church congregation has grown by more than 33,000 attendees. He continues to transform many lives by sharing the truth of Jesus Christ through his books, including bestsellers, The Power of Right Believing and Destined to Reign, and his newest book about the Holy Communion, Eat Your Way to Life and Health. Please welcome Joseph Prince. City. Come on, New York. I like it. So, if you've never been to the studio audience, we're just a few steps off of Union Square. What street is that right out here? 15th. 15th? 15th Ave or Street or 15th Street, just right out here, just off Union Square. And, um, uh, yeah, welcome. There's so many new timers here tonight. I'm so, and they're all going to Joseph's uh, service. Yeah. yeah, I like it. Okay, start um, first of all, and just kind of introduce the subject the way you want to introduce it. We got a couple of questions and and a few mm -hmm. things, but start. Uh, Joseph, and by the way, the 800 number on the screen is available if you want to get this book. Uh, there's somebody standing by right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's so nice because these 800 numbers are different for everything. So when you call that one on the screen, I can see it because I can read it off the screen here, 201-5200. <laughs> that is for this book. And by the way, when you do this, your gift doesn't just get you the book. It helps get Christian TV around the world in multiple languages. And we thank you for what you do to get these books. Uh, get it, order it now. <laughs> Brand new book. Okay, how do you want to kind of introduce it, the subject matter in general? I, I want to say that uh, this book, Eat Your Way to Life and Health, is not another diet plan. It is, <laughs> <laughs> it is not a, another exercise uh, regimen or something that you do, right? It's something that you received from the okay. Lord All right. Mm -hmm. every day if, if you are able to do that. When you think about it, the early church broke bread from house to house daily. Can you imagine I come over to your place and uh, we break bread and then we go to uh, uh, Bob's house and then we break bread again. Got it. They were radical. Yes. And uh, in Acts 20, it says that upon the first day of the week, which is Sunday, they came together to break bread. Hmm. And who was the guest speaker? Paul. Paul was in town. And yet it does not, does not say that they came together to hear Paul. Hmm. They came together to break bread. So we are just uh, coming back to the original plan of God. Mm. Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me. Amen. So about 20 years ago, when I first started preaching this, um, uh, I, I was a young pastor with a growing congregation, and I was concerned because uh, um, many of them were not able to exercise that kind of faith, you know, Mark 11, 24, and I believe right now I receive, I receive it, no doubt, no wavering, nothing. He that wavereth will not receive, you know? Right. And it's too much pressure for them, and I noticed that many of them were coming down with uh, age-related illnesses, some of them chronic problems, some of them incurable sicknesses like Alzheimer, um, cancer and such. And I, I began to seek the Lord. I said, there must be a provision in grace. It cannot be that you brought the people of Israel out with silver and gold, Psalms 105, and there was none feeble among them. Two to three million people, mind you. And there was none feeble, and God does not exaggerate. So if that is so in the old covenant, how much more the new covenant? Yeah, beautiful. You know, and, and I, I think to myself, there must be an answer here. So I sought the Lord and he brought me to 1 Corinthians 11, verse 37. 
for this reason, singular reason, for this reason, many, I kind of wish he said few, hmm. but Paul by the Spirit said, for this singular reason, many are weak and sick and fall asleep or die prematurely. Wow. So the verse before that says, those who partake unworthily, not discerning the Lord's body. It is not the problem with the cup. It is that people are not distinguishing between the bread and the cup. It's like a one lump sum. They take it, you know, as to remember the Lord. And they're not discerning. They're not taking advantage of what the body has accomplished for them. Got it. So when not discerning the Lord's body is the reason for this reason of not discerning, many are weak. So if we reverse that, if we discern the Lord's body every time we partake, we'll become instead of weak, strong. Amen. Instead of sick, we become healthy. Amen. Instead of falling asleep before the time, we'll live long. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. Okay. The, <clears throat> I I want I, I want to ask. Um, first of all, we, Wendy, we want you to kind of weigh in because you have a personal story, an injury situation, right. what happened earlier this year, and what did you see in regard to uh, communion? Yes, so while this book was being written uh, early this year, um, our son, Justin, just started first grade in school. So one day the school called me and said that he had a fall, and uh, I went to pick him up, and uh, I saw where he fell from, it was from a height quite a, a, a tall uh, place, a high place, and he had a bump on his head. So I drove him to the hospital, we got it checked out, you know, we, he went through a CT scan, and they found that he had a fracture behind his, a fracture in his skull, behind his left ear. Okay. And uh, he had to be warded immediately. So he was in hospital, and the next day he started throwing up and having very bad headaches, you know, he was in pain and they, they rushed him in for a scan again and they found the second fracture. So he had two skull fractures behind his left ear. And at that moment, you know, what could we do? We, there was no medicine that the doctors could give except for just simple painkillers. Mm. And then we just started taking the Holy Communion. Uh, one day we took like three to four times actually. And, and I would give him a pain scale. I would say, so how's the pain now? Or one to 10? He would say, it's a nine before wow. we took the communion. And then we'll say, okay, let's, let's take the communion. And then after we took the communion, you know, we thanked the Lord that He was healed, He was well. And then I would ask Him again, how's the pain? And amazingly, I mean, He's seven, He's not going to lie to me. He told me mm, it's come, come down to maybe a five. You know, and that's the second day. And, and each time we took the communion, the pain scale went down lower and lower. Beautiful, beautiful. It was, it was amazing because, you know, to see him in pain, that was really, it was hard for us. But uh, to see what the communion did for him in such a tangible way, mm. that we knew that the Lord was in charge. I yeah. know uh, we, we kind of said, okay, we're just going to trust the communion. We're not going to do any more scans. We didn't want to put him through the scans again. Yeah. We said, we're just going to trust the communion, trust that Mm -hmm. The Lord is doing the work to restore Justin, to restore his skull. And by the fourth day, he was out of hospital. Mm -hmm. and this is a double fracture, <laughs> right? Wow. You know, and he was out of hospital actually with no, hardly any pain. Yeah. yeah. So yes. you're right in the book, at the, yeah. you're home yes. writing about yes. <laughs> Justin. Yeah. Yes. So what, did, did it give you, oh, was it fuel for your fire? What, what? But yeah, it's sort of like make me angry. Oh, sure. It's almost like the, the roaring lion is yeah. roaring really loud mm -hmm. yeah. and saying, don't, don't write this book. Mm. All right? oh, it's like a, a warfare kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It's almost like I could hear you know, the hissing you know, of that mm -hmm. snake and saying, don't write this book. And so I believe by, by, by the devil saying that, mm -hmm. I know that this book is going to make a lot of difference in the lives of multitudes <laughs> you know, in the warfare. Um, circle back. Um, to one thing, you mentioned a minute ago uh, that you noticed in your young ministers and right. your young growing church that right. it was difficult for them to think, let's teach that the communion is going to instantaneously heal somebody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's teach that this is going to be a progressive healing. You saw right. that happen yes. that way with yes. Justin in the hospital mm -hmm. earlier this year. And so circle back to that. That seems to be a key here yeah. that we should expect what when we 
read and know, mm -hmm. but then when we partake, what, what is it that we should expect? Well, every chapter of the book, there's a testimony of, of healing, and most of them are from America, right? And uh, the testimonies, most of the testimonies that we have received are people who receive healing incrementally. In other words, every time they partake of the Lord's Supper, they are believing, they're getting stronger. Mm. Not everyone has the faith of Mark eleven twenty four 24, to say, I believe I receive right now, and from now on, I'm not going to doubt. I'm not going to, you know, uh, make uh, negative confessions. Yeah. It's kind of hard for some people, but they can believe. With what little faith they have, every time I'm partaking, I'm getting better. Mm -hmm. Every time I'm partaking, I'm getting better. And uh, we have testimonies, like two testimonies of Alzheimer being healed. Mm -hmm. One of it is spectacular. Uh, one of it, it was incrementally. Um, the first one was a lady who testified that mother has been diagnosed with Alzheimer's and she, she degenerated to the point where she could not recognize the names and the faces of the family members. So the daughter got hold of this message and, and hearing my, my sermons on, on the Lord's Supper and then what she did was she took communion for the first time with mm -hmm. the mom. The mom fell asleep, the very next day she woke up, she could name all of them. Beautiful. Her memory was completely restored. Beautiful. Now that is spectacular. But we have another testimony of a lady who had a husband who was told by the doctor he has Alzheimer. Get ready, you know, you're, you need to resign from your work and prepare for the worst. And uh, uh, they took communion every day. They got hold of the teaching, took communion every day. But four and a half years, they went back to the same doctor and looked at the scan. And the doctor says, she said, I cannot believe the same person. She wow. cannot believe her eyes. She said, wow. that, I'm rewriting the, the, the diagnosis. Wow. You're right? you, you have no Alzheimer. So, and Alzheimer's is not a condition that can be reversed. So it gets God, worse and worse. God heals both ways. Yeah. But like for example, just now you can't remember, you can't remember the street name just now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the, the first timer. It's Fifteenth Street. Hey, okay. Yeah, We're yeah. in New York City. So even forgetfulness. The address is one 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 Fifteenth Street, New York. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> don't ask me what the telephone number is. Or I don't know. So, um, the let. Uh, Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Do some people say, well, okay, then that's by work. So I'm doing that, and yeah, that's just yeah. becoming a, re a religious practice mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of taking communion. How do yeah. we? In fact, uh, we have a mutual friend, Samuel Smudger. Yes. We do. In Israel, and uh, Matt knows him really well. Um, and he was diagnosed with uh, bladder cancer, a rare aggressive form of bladder cancer early this year. And uh, I was in Israel in March, and I saw his, uh, you know, his countenance. He was so downcast. He was so discouraged. And the doctors told him, with this kind of cancer, it's an aggressive form, rare, rare form of cancer. Even with treatment, you have 20% success, only 20% of success, all right? Um, he went through treatment, but at the same time, he took communion every single day. At least most of the days, he took communion. And he says that uh, my teaching on uh, uh, the, the first Passover of Israel, why I taught that God, told, God instructed Israel to put the blood on the doorpost yeah. and on the lintel. You can see the cross. But what were the people doing in the house? They were eating the roasted lamb. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says the very next day, when they came out, none feeble among the tribes. Mm. So something happened. They partook of the roasted lamb. Roasted means the lamb has been judged Amen. with the eternal fires of judgment falling on the, on the lamb. So they partook it, and the next day, not a single one was feeble. And I, and I shared with, with my friend Samuel, I said that if the type can do that hmm. in the Old Testament, how much more the substance that we hold in our oh, hands? Oh, wow. Beautiful. Beautiful. How much more the substance? This is the body of the Lord Jesus. And... Uh, uh, he began, he said there was a revelation that really uh, guided him mm -hmm. and he's began to partake almost every day. Then he started telling me, well, Pastor Prince, you know, he's into grace, he understands grace and won't this become legalistic? I feel like sometimes I'm doing it legalistically. I said, not if you see the Lord waiting for you with the elements yeah. every day. He's waiting on you. So even though your hands are preparing the elements, you must see the Lord bringing the elements. It was Melchizedek, a type of Christ that brought the elements yes. to Abraham. It wasn't Abraham preparing the elements. Abraham received the elements. So I, don't, I, I told him not to see communion as something that you do, but something that you received. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Every day, Beautiful. have you met your appointment with the Lord? Have you met the Lord today? Have you received your daily bread today? Mm. Well, he's waiting with the elements. Mm. You must see it that way. He's waiting with the elements. 
your daily bread is there. Have and you done it? Have you received it? Mm -hmm. And that's really just to remember Him. Yes. So it is, yeah. is really to receive. It's, it reminds me of your last revelation about living the let go life or the mm. or, or hanging on to you have to yeah. let go to let so go. that you have a receiving that mm. he is a constant mm. flow to you as right. it were right. mm. and our worry chokes off that so yes. this is a way to get to a point to receive from Jesus so you're not doing you're receiving yeah okay mm. beautiful okay what does it mean to you Wendy well what does it mean to me it is um I love it that God's things are so, the, the God's ways are just so simple, yeah. but so powerful. Mm. Yeah. You know, um, we don't have to climb the highest mountain. We don't have to be, to give you know, thousands of dollars to find, some, to, to find something to, to get our healing. Right. Mm. You know, it's just so simple. It's just a simple partaking. Mm -hmm. He makes it so easy for us. Yeah. And, and I love that about Him. I love also that it is not just about instantaneous, although the, the spectacular miracles that we hear of, it's, it's wonderful. We are all happy about that. Yeah. But you know, God understands where we are. Yeah. He knows yeah. at what level of faith we are at. Yeah. And He allows us to go through that journey with Him. Yeah. And by partaking, we go through on that journey with Him. Yeah. And He makes it so easy. Yeah. Beautiful. We're going to partake together. Yeah. Uh, Eat Your Way to Life and Health is not a diet book. It is a communion book. Yeah. We're going to do communion. Prepare yourselves at home. Yeah. Um, the, in case somebody is new to Christianity, where does the partaking and the communion mm -hmm. even come from? Where, what, what part of the story of Jesus does this come from? Let, let me just finish the testimony. I just remembered uh, my friend Samuel Smaja, our friend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He partook, um, and a few months ago he called me up and he says, uh, Pastor Prince, he was so excited. He was weeping on the other side. Mm -hmm. The doctors just had me checked and they found no trace of cancer. <laughs> no trace of cancer. A rare form of cancer. And you know it. You know, you know Samuel Smadra. He says, like, I, I feel like a new man. I got a new lease of life now. Yep. Yes. You know, and he appears in your program often as a host, yep. you know, on, on the balcony, the beautiful balcony. Yep. And and he's now he's now a new man. He, he he's raring to go and serve the Lord. Wendy said something very profound just now also. It's a simple act of eating. When someone says, what a simple act of eating can, yeah. can bring such tremendous healing, when you think about it, the fall of man happened because of a simple act of eating. Wow. Man ate his way into the curse, into sickness, into death. Wow. But a simple act of eating. So isn't it like the Lord to say that now you partook of the wrong tree, all right? The tree of life has not been partaken. Wow. All right? By the simple act of eating, we can eat our way into the blessings and the favor of God, into the wholeness that the Lord has for us. So what was that question I just asked? <laughs> you were talking about, before I, I, I talked to you. No, I, where did I it come from? Yeah, where did it come from? I said, in case somebody if doesn't new, know right? and new to yes. the whole thing, where did the story of communion even come from? Yeah, um, it's definitely in the Bible, you know, from the Word of God. Like I said, uh, in the early church, they practiced it from, from house to house. They broke bread daily. Uh, Paul broke bread, you know, even uh, when there was a storm uh, in the seas, in the high seas, and he broke bread. Uh, they came together in Acts 20 to break bread. So the purpose for meeting back in those days is to break bread. Mm -hmm. And the Lord says, as often as you do this, do, it in do this in remembrance of me. Yeah. If Laurie were to tell you, you know, uh, I'm going away, honey, and uh, every week I want you to stand under this particular tree, <laughs> all right? Just, you just, just to remember me, okay? <laughs> I think you would do it, right? You would do it because it's not about. <laughs> it, On TV right now, I would do it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I would do it for Wendy, but. Uh, you know, the, the thing is that it's not our, lang our love language that we need to be concerned about. It's His love language. Right. Yeah. He says, do this. This is how He wants to, rem to be remembered. And we, we think in terms of like, uh, you know, if I, if I do the treatment and if I go through this uh, uh, thousands of dollars uh, medicine, me treatment or whatever, maybe there'll be results. Yeah. Men tend, tend to think that way. God says, the children's bread is healing. Yeah. It's not yes. right to take the children's bread, remember that? Yeah. Yeah. And, and a simple act, even a, and the lady says, even the crumbs yeah. 
yeah. that fall from the master's table. The Lord says, oh woman, great is your faith. Yeah. Yeah. So we take the crumb even, and we think to ourselves, even a crumb can drive cancer out of your body. Yeah. That's the way God thinks. God uses the weak things of the world to confound, to yeah. put to naught the things that are mighty. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas the world thinks of expensive treatments, you know, the more expensive, you've got to go to Switzerland, you've got to go here and there. In fact, this is the fountain of youth. Yeah. Wow. The more you partake, the younger you become. Come on, now. H backwards. I got two. Yeah. So, I'm ready. And double up. There was a couple of thousand years ago, there was a Thursday night when Jesus got together uh, shortly before he was arrested mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then ultimately tried and killed. Mm -hmm. He sat with his disciples mm -hmm. and kind of showed this ceremony, mm -hmm. and as an act of remembrance of that Last Supper, uh, Jesus really basically said at that time to remember me. Mm -hmm. right. So mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a remembrance. It, yes. Jesus did this, was arrested, tried, mm -hmm. died, cru uh, crucified, and rose from the dead, and here we are 2,000 years later. And the ultimately, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to partake uh, together. So, what, how do you want to, uh, in, in a minute, we're going to mm -hmm. actually start the service. What do you want to get out concerning the book? What else is in here uh, that we haven't been able to cover tonight before we actually do a service together? You know, uh, especially America, in the world we live in today, with the, all the advancement of uh, uh, medical technology, and there are a lot more people who are sick. Mm. You know, I, I look at your television program, in between all kinds of advertisements for, you know, uh, medicine and things like that. Now, we thank God for all the advancement. We thank God. I believe God is behind all the advancement of sure. medicine and all that. But, but uh, again, many of the books out there on health plans and exercises and all new, new names of, of exercises, different forms and all that, they are well and good. I, I observe uh, my diet and, and, and I try to exercise as much as I can. But again, all those books have one common theme what is natural. Hmm. But the problem of sickness is that it is supernatural. Mm -hmm. wow. You cannot use what is natural to, to fight or combat that which is supernatural. Mm. Yeah. Whereas communion is supernatural. Yeah. Many a times uh, people who are oppressed uh, with sickness, they're oppressed by the devil. Yeah. Yeah. Not in every case, but many cases. Mm -hmm. Jesus went about healing all that were oppressed of the yeah. devil. So the devil is involved, your, your exercise, your dumbbells is not going to help you. You know, your, 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 your eating is not going to help you. Many of those people that Jesus healed in his day, they were on a Mediterranean diet. Mm -hmm. yeah. All of them were. Right. Uh, they, they, won't, they won't be caught alive eating pork yeah. or bacon. Yeah. Right. They were all on a, on a Mediterranean diet, yet they were sick. Yeah. 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 You know, right. I, I saw I, I, I love Mediterranean diet. <laughs> I try to observe it as much as I can, you know. I, I, I try to eat, we try to eat healthy. But even organic food, the earth is fallen. Amen. Man is trying to get health from creation. Yeah. But creation has fallen. Yeah. Even the nutritional value of the good food you are eating, like carrot, for example, compared to 50 years ago, it's, all, it's, it's not there anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Right? But communion is a supernatural way. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Not natural. It is out of this world, amen? It is a gift from our loving Father yes. to remember His Son by. Yes. Okay, Good. and in, in case somebody tuned in, by the way, the 800 number on the screen is for this book. This is available now, so just call that number on the screen. Um, make sure that you talk enough. I'll give you another chance uh, <laughs> in case you feel like you want to add something to it, is that this isn't becoming some kind of religious act, that right. it isn't, mm -hmm. um, you know, some kind of repetitive thing. Mm -hmm. There was a, a, a very popular book that sold a whole bunch of copies back mm -hmm. in the day. It was called The Prayer of Jabez, and mm -hmm. some people loved it, and other people criticized it, that it was some kind of ritual that you were doing or mm -hmm. some kind of religious act then yeah. that, that you were doing. So make sure you've said everything you want to say about this, mm -hmm. how many times a day, three to four times a day when you were with Justin in the hospital, that this wasn't some kind of repetitive thing you were doing, yeah. you were receiving. So yes. just talk about that, make sure you've kind of uh, nailed that. I love the chapter inside there where it talks, Revelation brings victory, okay. Revelation brings results. I love that because it talks about 
it's not enough just to hear the testimonies tonight and you, you go off saying that, oh, I got it, I'll take communion. No, you, you must have the revelation. Okay. It's going to be fresh. Yeah. Okay. Listen to the teachings again and again and again and have a fresh revelation. The Bible says that uh, about the peace offering uh, in the book of Leviticus, one of the offerings called peace offering is an is a animal offering, the lamb. The lamb is roasted and after that, the priest partake of the breast of the lamb. So today, that speaks of our Lord Jesus and we partake of His love. The breast speaks of His love, right? But then it says, on the third day, you cannot partake of it. It must be part partaken on the first day and second day. On the third day, everything must be burned. What is God saying? He's saying, keep it fresh. Yeah. Stick close to the cross. Yeah. Let the freshness be there. When you partake the Lord's Supper, take it as if the lamb just died. Yeah. In the book of Revelation, mm. I saw the lamb as if he had just been slain. Mm. Hebrews 10 tells us, boldness to enter the holiest in a new and living way. Yeah. Check out the word in the Greek for the word new. New is freshly slain. Mm. Freshly slain, just slain. Mm. So when I partake of the Lord's Supper, I say, Lord, I receive this as from you, from your hands. And Lord, it's just now, it's, I think it's like just now you bore my diseases. Mm. Just now you bore the scourging. Mm. Just now. And by your stripe, I am healed. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So when I partake, I, I, I have that sense of freshness. It, 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 there's no way you can get into legalism because you're looking forward every time Amen. to partake of the Lord's Supper. Mm. Where Beautiful. were you, uh, again, get your elements ready at home, where were you when the subject of this hit you, you knew you wanted to take on this subject matter? Yeah. Um, you know, I've never written a book, don't plan to, but I assume they're hard to write, so this is something you had to really get revelation for. When, were, when was that and how did that come to you? That, that was about 20, slightly more than 20 years ago when I first started preaching on this. And again, it was because I was seeking the Lord, asking the Lord for my own congregation. I never dreamed that one day the world will hear that sermon, yeah. right? But uh, it was just for our people. And uh, when I found where it says for this reason, singular reason, now we have so many reasons why people are not healed, yeah. all right? But the Bible says for this singular reason, Many are weak and sick and fall asleep. So that became my task to find out what's happening here, you know, that we have missed about the Lord's Supper. Mm. And, and I think that uh, many a times we have relegated it to, uh, you know, once a month, that kind of thing. And also people are afraid because of erroneous teachings that if you have sin in your life, you cannot partake mm. because uh, you'll bring judgment on yourself. Mm. But that's a misinterpretation of the passage. As it is, the world is under a sentence. This, ever, ever since Adam sinned, the sentence of death is there already. Sickness, weakness, death. You partake of the Lord's Supper so that you will not be condemned with the world. Amen. You will not suffer the condemnation that is already in the world. It is not that you partake with sin, it comes on you. You know, it's already there. You partake your way out of it. Amen. Beautiful. All right? and, and, and the word there, unworthily, talks about the action. Do not partake of it unworthily. It's not referring to the person. It's the manner by which you partake. Got it. In other words, if I, if I remember the Lord went to suffer. By the way, the Levitical offerings in the Old Testament, none of the lambs and, and sheep were killed or tortured before they were put on the altar. Yeah. They were all slain in a humane way and put on the altar. They were not tortured. Only the Lord Jesus Christ was scourged and tortured yes. mm. before He went to the cross. Mm. So why, why did that happen? Why did God allow that to happen? Because by His stripes, yeah. we are healed. Beautiful. So when I partake with that realization, it does something. They so say you need to hear the revelation of it. You need to be fresh. Yeah, beautiful. Let's do it. Okay. Um, <laughs> come on, New York City. I love it. We have prepared um, a, a video that kind of shows a little bit more about the book, uh, brand new book, Eat Your Way to Life and Health, Unlock the Power of the Holy Communion. Watch this. When we come back, uh, let's have a service together. Audience, you're all set. TV audience, get ready. We'll do a service when we get right back from this clip. Watch this. For centuries, man has tried to get healthier, get stronger, and live his best life by changing what he eats. What if I told you there was an all-natural plant-derived oil? There is a food trend quietly sweeping the country, changing our outlook on what we eat. But how can we tell truth from trend? In Joseph's latest book, Eat Your Way to Life and Health, you'll discover how the Holy Communion releases the health-giving power of the Lord's finished work into your body every time you partake. My friend, 
the world can offer diet plans and nutrition tips, and I'm all for eating well and exercising. But the Holy Communion is so much more than that. It's not just another diet plan. It is the very power of the Lord's finished work released into our bodies every time we partake. Ever since I started preaching strongly on the communion about 20 years ago, people from all over the world have written to me to share their healing testimonies. An elderly man suffering from Alzheimer's disease with no hope of recovery was completely healed. The Lord restored his mind through the Holy Communion and his wife is overjoyed to have him back. Another brother wrote in to share that through the partaking of the communion, his youngest son, who had a 17-degree curve in his spine, was completely healed. Latest x-rays show no trace of the scoliosis he used to have, and his spine is now completely straight. These are just two of the many testimonies that I share in this book, including my own. I want to invite you on this journey. As you partake of the Holy Communion, I pray that you will experience the Lord's healing and restoration more and more. God bless you. Joseph Prince's latest book, Eat Your Way to Life and Health, is now available. Get your copy today. We are in New York City talking about one of the greatest subjects there is in the whole world. Okay, it is how to receive from the Lord Jesus. We, we, if this was something we were doing, it could be a religious act. Yeah. If this is something that we're receiving, mm -hmm. uh, that's the way we need to look at it. Right. And so one of the most amazing things we can do together is to just simply partake. Pastor Joseph, mm -hmm. let's pretend we're uh, at uh, your beautiful church in Singapore and you're... 40,000 people are out there now, and, and uh, we'll, our studio audience is, is prepared, and I know that those at home, uh, around the world, um, it doesn't matter what they use with us, yeah. does it? And so just anything, right. something liquid and something that could be like a cracker or something like that, and uh, participate with us. This is a very special, beautiful time here in New York City together. Thank you, Pastor, and uh, please. Before we partake, I just want to say a word for those of you who feel like taking communion might expose you to sickness or because of erroneous teachings or premature death. Let me just assure you, communion is the way out of them. Mm. The Lord ordained in such a way that even by the simple act of eating, man's, man fell because of the simple act of eating. So we can eat the Lord's body, eat our way back into the blessings of God. As you partake, remember the Lord Jesus bore your sicknesses in His body. So right now, as you hold the bread in your hand, the way you partake worthily is to remember that He bore your sicknesses. The way you drink the cup worthily is to not feel sin conscious anymore. Because Jesus says this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for the what? Remission, not for the consciousness. Every time you partake, you got to know your sins are remitted. Amen. Past, present, and future. Yes. That is doing honor to the work of Jesus. Amen. That is partaking worthily. Amen. To partake with sin consciousness, to partake with sickness consciousness, is to be unworth to partake unworthily. So let's have a fresh attitude towards the Lord's Supper. This is the way out, people. Amen. Amen. And, and, and just tell the Lord, Lord, I receive these elements Lord, as from your hands. I thank, you I thank you that in your own body, you have borne away all my sins, all my diseases, my pains, and even my aging. And I thank you, I discern your body now, that by your stripe, I am healed. Just name whatever it is before the Lord. Thank you by your stripe, Lord. I am healed of that. I am healed of forgetfulness. Yes. I am healed in my, both my eyes. I am healed from hypertension. I am healed from arrhythmia. I am healed in my heart, in all my arteries. I am healed in my kidneys. Yes. By your stripe, yes. I am healed in my brain. Yes. 
and my brain is made every whit whole. Yes. Yes. By your stripe, I am healed in my, in my hearing. Thank you, Father. By your stripe, I am healed in my spine. And by your stripe, I am healed in my legs. Whatever your ailment is, just name that to the Lord, but be conscious of the health and the healing, not your sickness. Just say, by your stripe, I am healed of this. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Amen. As you hold the cup before the Lord, the Bible says you proclaim the Lord's death till He comes. Every time the Lord's death was proclaimed, in the Old Testament even, when Samuel offered a sucking lamb, the Philistines were defeated. God thundered from heaven. So every time we proclaim the Lord's death by lifting up the cup, God is sending victories, breakthroughs. But remember the blood was shed so that all your sins will be remitted. You should not have any consciousness of sin. It's not a time to be sin conscious. It's time to be forgiveness conscious. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. All my sins remitted through your blood. Amen. Amen. I'm looking at a stronger, healthier, and a younger you. Amen. Amen. This feels fresh. Um, the way that that you have explained it to receive, keep pushing that into us a little bit inside of just this last couple of minutes. Make sure that we understand we're receiving and that we have worthily partaken. Amen. Uh, partake of it knowing that the Lord is, del is delighted. He finds joy in your partaking. Yes. And uh, see Him already there holding the elements. Even though your hands are preparing the elements, it is Him holding the elements mm. in His hands, waiting for you. Every single day He's waiting. Give us this day our daily, daily bread. bread. It's never a weekly bread. It's never a monthly bread. You come partaking, you thank the Lord for it. Even renewal of youth, Psalms 103. How does that happen? God who satisfies your mouth with the good thing. Mm -hmm. so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Mm -hmm. Amen. You can believe God every single time you partake that you're getting better and better. But don't have this sense of I'm partaking of something that happened 2,000 years ago. No. The Bible says the lamb as if he had been slain. Because in God's dimension, there is no time. The lamb just died just now. Yeah. He just took your cancer just now. Yeah. Amen. So you partake and say, Lord, I thank you. I see it, Lord, and I thank you by your stripe. I am healed of this condition. Do it every day. If you're, you know, you, you have medicine, you take three times a day, right? Yeah. Why not give God the same respect? Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Amen. Take as many times as you want. Yeah. And best of all, you cannot have side effects that go with it, you know? Yeah. Uh, any uh, downturn time, praise God. Wow. Okay. Next. Eat Your Way to Life and Health, a uh, brand new book. By the way, if you're watching this broadcast for the first time, uh, today is Monday, October 14th, 2019. In two days, Wednesday, you're going to be in Washington, D.C., right. uh, Dallas, Texas on the 20th, uh, 26th, 27th, Saturday and Sunday, be with uh, Pastor Joseph. Uh, jo you Joel. will be with Pastor Joel. And then on October 30th, yep. uh, you'll be in Los Angeles. What's What venue in Los Angeles? Uh, I think... Uh Microsoft. Microsoft, Microsoft Arena, Microsoft, got it. So Microsoft Arena, so if you're watching this the first time it airs, the 14th of October, Pastor Joseph is the 16th, the 20th, 26th, 27th, and the 30th here in the United States. See him in Houston, Texas, Dallas, Los Angeles, go to the website. And uh, what, what are you 
uh, prepared to share here on your tour here in, in, uh, in America? Well, on the Lord's Supper, yeah. but in every venue that I'm, I'm going to, there'll be a night of worship. Yeah. And in this night of worship, it is something uh, very unique that the Lord has shown me some time back that, that uh, has come to pass, you know, and we did in our church a night of worship where I would lead worship, but it's based, it's not exactly a musical, but it's based on the life of David, mm. how David is a type of Christ. And uh, how David, uh, when, when the, might, the, the, you know, the, the man who were the 3D army that came to him in distress, discontented, they came to him, they became mighty men. Mm. Whereas the men that followed Saul, they followed him trembling. Yeah. You see a type of Jesus coming to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. The father sent David with bread to the brothers. God sent his son with bread for the Jewish people. Yeah. But the brothers rejected him. But he became the conqueror over the champion of the Philistine, right? And, and, and something interesting about the life of David, uh, the Bible says uh, that uh, he brought the head of Goliath to Jerusalem. Mm. What? <laughs> Why would anyone decapitate someone <laughs> in the Valley of Elah and bring his, his head all the way to uh, ah. Jerusalem? Uh, here's where the Bible stops. And you know what? The Jewish, the rabbinical studies tell us that, that uh, he buried the head in Jerusalem. Wow. So that intrigued me, and I found out that the word Golgotha gol is a perversion of the word Goliath. Wow. Gol and Golgotha, the place of the skull. Whose skull? Oh, oh my goodness. The giant. So a greater son of David. Yeah. Wow. Conquer a greater Goliath. Wow. In the very spot where the head was buried. Wow. wow. Let's go to Jerusalem and find it. Let's dig it up, man. That'd be amazing. <laughs> Love that. So. Um, Eat your way to life and health. Pastor Joseph, first of all, Wendy, thank you for uh, Gracing our stopping stage. by here yes. on the beginning of your uh, month long here in the United States. Uh, again, if you're watching for the first time, it is Monday the 14th, and uh, we got a whole bunch of stuff. Just go to the website, and uh, the 800 number on the screen is for this book. When you order these books, not only do you get a great book, you help Christian television go around the world, even to places like Singapore, which goes into the into the internet, and you guys are able to, to yeah. watch. And anyway, amazing thing. Pastor Joseph, Wendy, thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for having us. New York City, are you kidding me? Pastor Joseph, eat your way to life and health. Call the number on your screen. We'll see you next time. If you were blessed by this video, please feel free to comment on what spoke to you, hit the like button, or share this with a friend who needs encouragement. Don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on any of my latest videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.